Here's a Batumi module from XOC devices or Chaos devices, a Quad LFO module featuring free running, quadrature, phase and divide modes. It can be reset, sync to external clocks, and it actually syncs really slow as well, which I know a lot of people are interested in. And each LFO has got free outputs at any given time as well. This is the XEOC Devices Batumi and Potty Expander module. The first mode on the Batumi is the four free running LFOs. The first LFO, I'm going to take the assigned waveform out, which is a triangle wave, going into an attenuator, then a quantizer, and then that's sending pitch information to my oscillator in the patch. Each new note triggers a gate, and then that's opening up a low pass gate. So you can hear the triangle wave playing up and down the scale. Here's a different waveform. And these are selected by the switches on the Potty Expander module. This is now trapezoid. And there's saw waves and ramp waves as well. And a square wave. And this is just a high and a low value. Sticking with the triangle and bringing in the second LFO, I'm going to take the sine output into the timbre modulation of my oscillator. Here it is a bit faster. And I'll modulate the waveform on my oscillator further with a third LFO as well. The last LFO I'm going to take to control the level of a VCA, which has got some audio rate modulation going into it, and then that's going to open up and pass on some audio rate FM to my oscillator. And you can hear those wobbles and pitch modulation with a fourth LFO opening up that VCA, letting through the FM. What gets interesting with all the modes on the module is some self-patching. So I'm going to take the second oscillator's triangle output and use an RYO air attenuator. This is an inline little device you can plug between two cables to bring a signal down. And I'm going to control the rate of the first LFO with that second LFO. Turning the attenuation right down, we're back to a straight triangle wave again. So to get between the different modes, you simply press the button in the centre of the module. Pressing and holding will get you into zoom mode, which we'll look at a little later. But let's go into that second mode, which is a quadrature mode, and you can hear this in the patch that I've got set up. I'm going to use a sine wave, some smooth modulation on the first LFO, and its rate controls each other LFO as well. And each LFO is 90 degrees out of phase with the other, creating this quadrature LFO movement between the four different outputs. And whatever you do with the sliders on LFO 2 through 4, these affect nothing, the rate's controlled by that first LFO. I'm going to take a second LFO sign and modulate my oscillator further. I'll then modulate the level of a delay passing through a VCA with a third LFO, and this is going to be parallel delay in my mix. And the fourth LFO I'm going to take to open a VCA which has got the patch passing through into a spring reverb. I'll then swap some of these outputs to get the level of the spring reverb firing and the delay firing up between those different VCA levels. So these are 180 degrees out of phase with each other, so the effects are going to be a little clearer. Let's slow that LFO rate down. And cross patching in this mode is a bit strange as the second, third, and fourth LFOs are controlled by the rate of the first. I'm going to speed this up and then patch the third LFO out into the rate of the first LFO, which is then going to in turn control every other LFO in the patch as well.
So this creates some interesting feedback with that cross patching that's affecting each other and creates new and more complex wave shapes. The third mode is the phase mode and this is like the quadrature mode in that the first LFO's rate slider controls the rate of all the LFO's but that in phase mode each of the slider affects the phase of that LFO's output so on LFO 2, 3 and 4 between 0 degrees and a 360 degrees. So you can make these react like quadrature mode if you wish but they're completely variable on the second, third and fourth LFO's. To demonstrate this I've got four different voices droning on and with the notes passing into VCAs and the level of those VCAs are going to be controlled by each of the LFO outputs on the Batumi. I'll take the assign output and look at the different wave shapes which are either on the jumper on the back of the module or on the potty expander with the switches. So that's the first note. Here's a second LFO opening up the second VCA. And the third. And the fourth. And as these are all in phase with each other with those sliders at the bottom on the second, third and fourth LFOs, I'm going to look, go through the shapes on those assigned outputs. So here's a triangle. Let's take it to a ramp wave. This is trapezoid. And then a falling saw wave. So as I said, LFO1 controls the frequency of all the LFOs. And we can start to knock these out of phase with each other. Put this onto a triangle wave and then have each voice fade in and out with those VCAs opening out phase of each other. and take all these back into phase. And then adjust the phase bit by bit. Taking the third LFO sine wave out, I'm going to take that into the second LFO and control the phase in this mode rather than the rate of the second LFO with the third's output. I'll then take the now modulated second LFO and take that through an IYO air attenuator for some attenuation to modulate the phase of the fourth LFO. Going onto a falling saw wave on the assign outputs, you'll hear that harder edge on each LFO shape. So it's easy to create some really interesting patterns with more complex waves and phases through this self patching. The fourth mode is the divide mode and LFOs 2, 3 and 4 are musical divisions of the master LFO rate which is set by LFO 1. And we can get into clocking the unit and actually having this in sync and then dividing down the frequencies a bit later in the video. But for now I'm going to take a hi-hat sound and trigger that from the first LFO's square wave output. And as I said the rate controls all the LFO speeds. So let's trigger a bass drum from the second LFO's output and you can set that to divide by up to 32 as well.
we've got divide by two all the way at the top of that slider. Divide by three. And then divide by four and divide by eight. Taking in some different triggers into the outputs of the LFOs, we can start to build up a drum pattern. So that's just some basic drum programming. There's still the other way, form outs and the reset or sync input. And as in the other parts of the video, let's look at some self patching. So the inputs now will influence the divide amount for each of the LFOs. I've got the fourth LFO output going into the second LFO's input to influence that divide amount. So through this self-patching you can hit some more wonky and unsynced beats, all controlled by the rate on that first LFO. And as with any feedback or self-patching, some attenuation rates really well to control the patch. There's a zoom mode on the Batumi for fine tuning your LFO rates or phases depending on what mode you're in. I'm currently in the free running mode and I'm taking LFO 1 as output to control the rate of an oscillator. We've got the general course rate control on that slider that goes right up to audio rate. Pressing and holding the button you can see the LEDs flash which means we're in the zoom mode and you just press and hold again to get out of that. So pressing and holding, here's the flashing giving us that fine control mode. And notice that as I come out of the zoom mode the slider is now at the bottom it's the lowest value on that rate and my current rate is actually not set this low. So what the module does which is quite clever and a really good idea is that it doesn't change that cost tune of the LFO rate again until the slider actually passes that original value before you enter the zoom mode. Here's a sequence coming from the Moskva module. This is going into my quantizer and then sending pitch to my oscillator which is going into a filter. I'm going to modulate that filter with the LFO's output straight into the filter's CV input. So you can hear this is just a plain, unsynced LFO and a triangle wave shape on the assign output but the unit will actually track a volt per octave as well so I'm going to take the same sequence that's going to the pitch of my oscillator to that volt per octave control into the volt per octave in on the Batumi LFO for some pitch dependent and pitch tracking LFO rates. So notice the lower notes are at slower rates and the higher pitch notes are at faster LFO rates. So I'm going to look at the unit's 1V per octave tracking again, but I'm going to use it at audio rate this time. This isn't really the focus of the module up at this audio rate operation, but it will do that, and it operates between 53 minutes per cycle up to 500Hz per cycle. But above 100Hz, the manual states that the wave shapes are quite as precise and the output amplitude can be lower, but it still works great. Here I'm going to add a sequence to the rate input. And this is tracking a volt per octave. And I've got nowhere left to take the module in terms of the rate as the slide is at its fullest, so I'm going to add a 1 volt octave offset to my sequence. And you can hear the tracking starting to go, so I'm going to add 2 volts to that sequence that's going into the input. And you can hear the unit's really maxed out and the tracking and that top range starts to really limit. But adding that amount of offset to my sequence that's going in, I can then bring down that rate slider and get a more usable audio rate range on that course tuning through the LFO slider. Go into the zoom mode and fine tune that rate as well. Taking a second LFO up into audio rate, and then I'm going to use this to modulate the next LFO's rate and actually FM that LFO like we would using two different oscillators. the sign output I'm going to go through the different modes we can actually go into the phase mode and modulate the phase at audio rate instead of the FM that we're getting in the free running mode. So here's the free running mode with the FM modulation on that second LFO coming from the first LFO. And now going into phase mode notice the difference in the tone and the character. Thank you. 
Here I'll look at the reset and sync input which is assignable by a jumper on the back of the module or on the expander module. There's also jumpers as mentioned for the assign waveform selection but these are also on the expander as well. Starting with the reset we're listening to the first LFO audio rate going into a filter and I'm going to modulate the filter with the second LFO taking a saw wave output. Using a signal from the ADE32 octal controller which is next to the module, I'm going to take that output and use that as a reset. And you can follow the LEDs on the ADE32 to see the rate that that's running at. So you can hear that reset and let's play around with the rates. With each reset signal, the Batumi resets really well. So I'm going to use a slow LFO and then hit that with a faster reset before it finishes cycling to create new shapes. Here I'm going to look at clock in the unit with a reset and sync assign, and this is going to be assigned to the sync input. You can see the module holds a previous clock rate when no input is present, but putting that clock back in, it takes the clock signal again and catches up within a few clock pulses. So it follows that clock rate nicely. The rate controller the LFOs in free running mode don't divide down the rate when there's a clock rate present, but if you've got a clock divider or multiplier in your system, you could use the free running mode, take your master clock into a divider or a multiplier, take four different clock rates out and put those into the sync inputs on the four Batumi LFOs. But you can actually get some onboard division through using the divide mode, we may remember we created some basic drum patterns with earlier in the video. So taking the LFO out into the FM controller my oscillator, you can hear that I'm getting the LFO cycling this filter. And I'm also getting two cycles on that first LFO controlling the filter for every one cycle on the second LFO which is controlling my pitch. And if this is in free running mode, it'd be totally unsynced. But in divide mode it stays syncs and divides against that first LFO which is taking my clock. So I'm going to slow down the second LFO now. And you can hear we're getting four cycles on the first LFO for every one cycle on the second LFO. And the second LFO is the one that's controlling pitch. Here's dividing that down by eight. So without actually having a clock divider, you can clock the first LFO, go into divide mode and use the second, third and fourth LFOs as divisions of that master clock and get four musically synced LFO patterns. And this will sync to a slow clock as well and then divide down even further. So that's it for the Bitumi module and the Potty Expander module as well. It's a feature packed, well designed module that gives you loads of modulation options and some great controller modes for controlling the phase and dividing of these LFO cycle rates as well. Hit like and subscribe for more videos every week and check the Patreon link in the description to see how you can support my channel.